<laughs> we could curse, right? Yes. Fuck. Nah. <laughs> Are you gonna? No, nah, you got kids. I've cussed. Nah. <laughs> I cuss in front of my kids. <laughs> we just met three days ago. A dude from Philly, me from the Bronx. Yeah. You brought your sneakers. I brought my sneakers. We've worked in and around sneakers. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the people have done the biggest sneaker stuff the entire industry has seen. You too. So let's talk about it. So there was this Vogue interview quote that caught my attention. I wanted to ask you a question on it. How important is it for you to show diversity on campaigns? Um, it's important now. Initially, my inspiration was this like punk white kid um, that represented this grunge culture in high school that I wasn't necessarily ever a part of. So I kind of like fantasized about it kind of thing. It's almost like how Japanese you see them kind of like fantasizing a lot about our like hip hop culture or yeah, yeah. even Americana culture. They know it better than we do. And so I was trying to tell this story of grunge and rock from my lens. And so it was super important for me to have the model. I needed to have him to tell the right story. That's me coming out of the gate in yeah. 2012, 2013. And second and third collections developed and my, my muse was like a skinhead and it kind of turned to the skinhead. And I, I, as I moved to fourth collection, we used Adonis and he was the only black guy in the cast of three or four other um, white models. But he was able to be in that cast and not take away from that vibe and only add to it. Right. And then fast forward to fifth collection, a lot of things changed in my life. I, I was sober for the first time and I started looking inside for a lot of my references and a lot of my references for fifth came from just me in high school. So it was important that I had someone that kind of looked like me. And furthermore, you know, my son is like, he's really looking at what I'm doing. And so I'm just like, yo, I gotta be conscious of what I'm showing him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of a long answer, so yeah, no, no, that's you, the man. best answer though. For you, where did you hit that point where you said, I feel confident going from clothing into footwear? It was when we used the, um, the Desert Storm boots in our third collection campaign. Yep. And I felt like after we used them in our campaign that they just became kind of a popular part of culture. Yeah. And it gave me the confidence that I could do something in footwear, that I, I could have a, a valid opinion yep. in footwear. And I used the same strategy around creating the shoe as I do around my clothes. Is just like, hey, I found this vintage denim jacket at the Rose Bowl. I wish it just fit a little bit different, yeah. you know? And for the footwear, it was like, hey, I wish I could wear those desert boots, but that toe is just too bulky. I can't get that off. Like, yeah. so if I just change that toe and I, you know, sleek up the shoe and give it my idea of what I feel like is a dope sole, I feel like I could have a valid proposition that could live in the market. It's almost you're finishing the wardrobe from top down. Like, yeah. I provided the layers for you, the tops, mm -hmm. the jackets, the outerwear. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's even a bigger point. Like where I was going into my fourth collection, I couldn't afford to go borrow some other sneaker or some other shoe to help me tell the story that I really want to tell. Yeah. What does the next five years look like for Jerry Lorenzo? Um, I don't know, man. Like I, you know, I, I you know, I've said it before. Like we move on instinct, we move on conviction, we don't we don't move on trend and there's no like goal to double the business or triple it. So I, I don't know. Each year we've we've been able to tell better stories because I have a better language to work from. Mm -hmm. And so I want to put more resources into our materials and understanding construction and all those things to, to put better product out there. And and where it takes us I I don't know but I'm enjoying the pressure of just not being on someone else's schedule for the yeah. first time in my life. And I feel fortunate that I've known you for long enough and like we've, we've watched each other grow as friends, as fathers, mm -hmm. helping with businesses. You And then watching you just transcend has been like really cool. So I appreciate you coming on here and sharing all that with Thanks us today, man. Cool. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. 
So I, I think we can all agree uh, having the opportunity to see a product before it actually hits the market gives you a feeling that going back to when you're a little kid, if you had the opportunity to see something before it came out. So we're thankful today that you've given us the opportunity to see some stuff that you know is, is obviously in, in a massive demand. You know what, four silhouettes in now? Four silhouettes. Yeah. Same category, I would say, luxury sneakers. We've got like three or four silhouettes to follow up next year. And then we have our, our lower tier silhouettes that live with vans okay. right now. I mean, we won't even waste any time. Whatever <laughs> you, you can pull show, out of this, show this, us this those bag exclusives. For us. Yeah. I mean, this is not really, this, this kind of starts the story. This is our military sneaker, which is the very first shoe that I designed, yeah. which was essentially just me trying to solve a problem in my own wardrobe. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that felt masculine and felt like a boot, but still had like the sexiness of, a, of an athletic tennis shoe. Yeah. And so I just kind of mashed all my ideas together in one, and this is a part of the uh, fifth collection. And the next shoe, this is like a takedown of this shoe, so we've we've removed the strap, we removed a lot of the the weight with the padding and the hook in the back, um, and really took this closer to the original inspiration for this, which was just kind of like a jungle. Military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're just kind of like scaling back now and making the about that silhouette. Yeah. Not necessarily all the noise of the strap and the zippers and all that stuff. And then the next shoe, which is the uh, the basketball sneaker, classic 87 Boston Celtics team that had all black sneakers yeah. and white laces, is at the essence of the design of this shoe. Yeah. We have this one coming out in Christmas, all red. Oh, wow. You know, with this, you know, gray bottom that, you know, gives it a little bit more athletic, sporty feel. The white laces and the white tongue. Um, it looks like it might be just a college basketball shoe from like 91 or something. Yeah. And this this is the same silhouette that you did the the Celtics collection in, yeah. in back? Yeah, same exact, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was amazing. That collection was, uh, was thanks, awesome. But yeah, so All right, what we, do we got next? So this is just kind of like, um, Similar to a, a color that's kind of already been out, we've, we've kind of put this out, but we added this heel piece and this top with this like black tongue that, that borrows from like a Nike ballistic from like yeah, 91, yeah. 92. And adding this gray bottom, you're, you're really feeling less fashion and a little bit more, you know, athletic. Yeah. This is just like Drake, Kentucky blue on them hoes. Oh, <laughs> with the blue bottom. Yeah, that's and clean. It just feels like it was maybe that team's color or team shoe or something. So is this the basketball collection right here? These four sneakers and these four colorways? Uh, yeah, I don't know if this one's going to make it. Definitely you're going to see this one. You're going to see an all blue version that looks just like that. Okay. You're going to see a red version that looks like this. Very cool. So you'll see these two kind of like okay. Kentucky blue and like I don't know what you want to call that, Louisville or something. Mm -hmm. You'll see those four colors in the market, and I think you'll you'll see this one hit also. All right. But this will be the first sold that you see with these like primary colors that are, are a little far from a what you would see in your classic like luxury. Sneaker. Yeah. Right. Well, shit, man. Thank you so much for giving us such a, an extensive look at everything, man. You yeah, know, I, yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're psyched to have you on here, and you know, to get this much depth and you know, history into everything. No, it's, uh, it's I, good, good to talk I about it, I truly appreciate man. it, man. <laughs> we truly appreciate it. All right, gentlemen, so what uh, we wanted to do right now is have a little round table. Some Sneak current stuff, some old stuff. We don't gotta necessarily debate, but we can debate if you want. Um, this shoe, I, I lost friends because of it. You know, I got straight dial tone, radio silence, everybody I reached out to for it. To get so. a pair of the To get a pair the of the Yeezys? Yeah. I looked mm -hmm. out with mine. I was able to get this pair through the Adidas confirmed app. The, the only person in the world <laughs> that it's worked for. <laughs> that it's worked for. You got Yeezy office. bandwidth. Crazy bandwidth. <laughs> it was out of control. So I logged into the app. I was like, there's no way I'm going to get these sneakers. And it so happened, as soon as it went live, I pressed it and it immediately said confirmed. And I was shocked. I'm like, holy shit, I can't believe I got a <laughs> yeah. pair of Yeezys. The first model, the 750 Boost. So That's when I cool. went to the store, they, the lady, I was like, I'm here to pick up the Yeezys. She was like, <laughs> yeah. She took me to the back and she put it in the bag already so people didn't see me walking out with yeah, like, yeah. sneakers. Rushy. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Wow. That's well, awesome. yeah, that's how I got them. That's They're sick. still dead stock. Just, that's cool. I, I keep them dead stock just on that story. 
right. alone. <laughs> So we got this thing is back in the market. I think I'm a hater, man. Yeah. I think this takes me back to a time when I felt like Nike was starting to do gimmicky stuff. Uh -huh. And it made me like not like it. I, like you said, I'm a purist in the terms of uh, in the Air Force, uh, Philadelphia. We are Air Force One city, but this is like- and I'm Too not hot going, for you? I'm not going to war trying to look good, you know? A little fear of God inspired. Yeah, it was cool. I like the idea behind it. I mean, there's a, there's a time and a place for the a ballistic, military sneaker. A ballistic top, and that's just, that didn't do it for that me. That didn't do it for you? Nah, no disrespect. But. All right, so the last one that we got to touch on. The so you got, you got to think, any player coming into the league, there's a lot goes into that first silhouette, and what market's going to leave yeah. as your career progresses. So from Mr. James, we got this, and I couldn't be any more of a fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> but the looks of your gentleman's face. I, I mean, I, I like the LeBron Zoom one. This is an incredible sneak. When I first saw it, I was like, damn, this is... LeBron came out with a great silhouette. What are your thoughts? Can we see it on Jerry? <laughs> Would you put that on? Man, I'll put it on. I don't know it's if I'm ball it. Oh, I definitely hoop in it for sure. I mean, I, I like it to me because I think it's his sleekest model. Right? Yeah. Like, I think after this, he started to get like super bulky. A lot of straps and yeah, stuff. Yeah, a lot of yeah. straps and very heavy. I can see you stunting in those. In the, in the, in the LBJs? Yeah. And yeah. the Kings? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't know if I could pull that off. Nah? nah. It's a little bulky, man. It's Yo, like, they look so nah, they you can look do it. crazy. You can do they look it. great on the foot, man. You could oh, definitely man. pull those off. Look how big that toe is. Is that your size too? Yeah. Wow, it does look pretty bulky compared to the Vans. Yeah, see, I'm used to like, I need to be there. But I'm the guy, I just found the original Swingman jersey that came out with that shoe too. <laughs> so I'm like, all I need is the new era and I'm, I'm good. I think we looked at some good sneakers. I think this is the best sneaker here though. That's you? What about you, where are you going? Probably the same. All right. I'm gonna have to have to go here, gentlemen. <laughs> LeBron against Yeezy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Who would have thought? <laughs> hey, that's and that's very much where where it's at right now. You know? right. Number one selling basketball shoe at Nike. Number one selling department at Adidas. I'm can imagine. So, that's it. <laughs>